Right, so good morning and welcome to uh, to the big pit. This is and this actual swim is a scene of a uh, quite a good catch I had a few weeks back. So uh, I'm going to do this video. We I'm going to talk about that, talk about uh, the baits, the rigs, and the, well, the whole situation, uh, how it all came about. So I'll start off with the first uh, the first screaming run. Who doesn't like a screaming run? Half past five in the morning. I woke up and these rods, like I'm fishing right now, I'm fishing to weed. They're quite tight. Usually the tag's here, a few bleeps and it's out the clip. This one wasn't, this was just going. So, but you know, it's, uh, it's a good fish. I get uh, on the rod and I'm playing this fish and it did feel good. It felt good. It could also be just an average sized fish with a ball of weed in its head. So I'm just, Playing it as usual, it's deep water out there, it's just charging around, no real dramas. That's until the left hand rod pulls out the clip. That's the way as well, I've got a double take, you know, half five, quarter to six on a Monday morning. So I tried rushing this first fish in, it wasn't being rushed at all. You know, there's 18 foot of water with underarm distance out there, it's just charging around at will. I'm putting extra pressure on, but uh, it's slowly taking its toll. The left hand rod, in the meantime, it's just kiting out to the left. Again, there's just deep water out there, no real trouble. I'd lean over every now and then, just take a bit of slacking if needed. Anyway, eventually the first fish comes into sight. There's no weed on it, it's just a nice chunky mirror into the net the first time, fortunately. I rest the net on the back of the boat, jumps out of the water quickly, sets me second net up, which I should have had set up originally to be started with, but I didn't. Pick the second rod up, had a similar sort of fight. It felt like another good deep fish, no real dramas. And into my second net, first time. So from being fast asleep in the land of Nod, I've now got two good fish in the nets at the side of each other, lent across the back of my boat. I'm looking down at these fishes, you always do, you pull the mesh up just to roll them on the side of the bit for the first look. I'm thinking to myself, that's a good mirror, you know, it may be 35-ish. The common's not bad either, that, uh, that may be 30. So, I get everything sorted, my slings, my camera equipment, my net, my mat, sorry. Then, uh, scale zeroed. I weighed the common first, it went 37 pounds. You know, when you then you lower the fish onto the mat again, you lift it up again, you see the needle. Yep, it's still 37 pounds. That's 37, what's the mirror? I secured it in the uh, in the sling. I weighed it out a bit further. I've got a stone pole in the water to secure the uh, retainer. I've got my second retainer all zeroed up. I weighed the mirror. The mirror, lovely, deep, rounded fish. That went 41 pounds. So a true double take, a true brace of uh, 78 pound of fish. And certainly my biggest brace by quite a long shot. And um, what a start to the morning. Now, I did the uh, did some self tapes, got a little bit of video footage of those two. And um, what else was it to do? Put the kettle on and take it all in. So at that point, I've got two rods still fishing, two rods still in. I'm thinking to myself over the morning brew, do I put the two rods back out? And I thought, no, I've still got two rods out there. There's fish in the area, it's bite time. I'm not gonna disturb the area. So uh, thankfully I've made the right choice. It wasn't long before, well, maybe an hour or so. I was away again with another um, hard fighting fish. And it didn't feel as big as the other two, but it was it still kept deep and it was quick. Now, there is a bit of video footage of this one, I was ready for it and I set my phone filming. I had to wade out and as you'll see on the, uh, the film, if it's included, it went right round to the left. I had to like whip my shorts off, just throw my fleece off and uh, get right round that bush there to try and turn it back. It did, it came back and then uh, it wasn't having any of that, it got right round there as well. So then again, I'm on giving it the side strain. And I think it was about 10 minutes uh, that one was on and in the net. That one was another good one. 34 pounds. 
with what was happening on this morning, it was, uh, I, mean, I should say, just before spawning as well, and I'm fishing to weed bed where they were likely to spawn, so right place, right time. I sorted that fish out and then the remaining rod was away, kind of inevitably, and um, that brought the average down. That was a 25 pound mirror. I say brought the average down with a bit of a tongue in cheek. Who doesn't like a 25 pound fish? A 25 pound is still a big, big calf, but in the general scheme of things of what had already gone off that morning, I was a bit, uh, I was a bit blown away. So I got a window of opportunity when the wind dropped. It was about, I want to say, I can't remember the time, but it was early afternoon, midday early afternoon. I got all the four rods back out, just. It wasn't easy, but got them back out, got them baited up, and I'm thinking, that's me. That's me set for the evening, for the night, and I can relax. And um, I was actually on the phone to my mum, and uh, I was a bit rude. I had to just basically, hang the phone up, throw the phone in the bushes because I got another take. And unbelievably, this was another 30 pounder. It was, this was a chunky, fat female, quite, uh, quite a distinctive fish in all. It's had some like weird markings down like the uh, lateral line. Turns out it's one I'd uh, caught before a few years back. And when you compare the two pictures, one, I think it's about five years difference, but one, it was like a low 20, you know, spawned out, just like a nice straight fish. and. This time it's 33 pound, it's got a right big belly on it. You know, they're all ready to spawn. So the wind is still almost friendly. So even though I've still got three rods out, I decided to put that one back out. I thought I'm, I need to have four out for the night. I thought this capture, it's middle of the afternoon, it's not that common, it's a bit of a one off. So I can use the weed. There's a bit of a marker, I know exactly where my spots are, so I fortunately managed to do that one first time. I've got four rods back in the game. And uh, I'm going to sound a bit like a broken record here, but it was away again. It was that rod that I'd redid, redid. That was away again, and this again, it wasn't just an uptight, a few bleeps and out of the clip. This was absolutely ripping. This felt like another big fish. And, Another typical big fish fight, like the first one of the morning, it just held out there, it kept deep. I was just gaining on it, you know, just a few feet at a time. Eventually, first time in the net, I looked down, I thought, I think I recognise this fish from pictures I'd seen before. And it was, it turned out it was a fish known as Ollie. Apparently, uh, something to do with like the scale part. Couldn't see it myself, but apparently the scales on its tail say Ollie. So that one was 41 pound again. That was my second 40 of the day. You know, from my favorite venue and all, if someone had ever told me I'd have a brace of 40s from here, I'd have just laughed at them. But it actually happened. So, I mean, I say 41 pound, it was, I'm, I'm not too exact with the weights, you know, the pound is close enough for me, but it was about 41.12 if I remember to be exact. But. I weighed it, I got it uh, secured in the sling and fortunately Martin the bailiff uh, was doing his rounds at that time and Martin is brilliant with a camera so you know he positively identified the fish from me, told me which one it was, it's one that he had at 40 as well which is, uh, which is good. He did me some brilliant pictures as well, I've had some video going on the side and um, then uh, back uh, Ollie went. You know, and what a fish, what a day. You know, six fish, two forties, a 37 common. And I'm happy. You know, who's not going to be happy with that? It went again. It ripped off. It was, I can't remember, it was one of the remaining rods. It was another hard fight. But this fish, it was faster, if that makes sense. You know, it felt, uh, it felt big, but it was just, wasn't as slow and plodding like the mirrors had been. This was, it was charging around, but forcefully. You know, I got it into the deep water closer in and I can, I know I can take my time up there. It's, I've never found a snag down there. There's no weed there. And I'm confident in me, uh, me hook holes. I'm confident in me tackle, its strength. And 
it went in the net. This one was another another big, deep, high-shouldered common, and oh mate, what a fish! But before I tell you about going on the bank, I've secured that one. I've weighed it again. It's thirty-seven pound exactly that one. Second thirty-seven pound common of the day. Well, that one's in the sling waiting for its uh, ceremonial pictures. I've got another take, two of the remaining rods. One of those has gone and um, yeah, I could tell that wasn't, uh, wasn't another chunk, although it's all relative. That was a beautiful 27 pound common. So I guess the first common, the big one out, um, did some uh, little bit of video, some pictures, a bit of video returning, you know, just, just admired him. It was, if I found out from Martin later on, it's officially called the Immaculate and that is a proper fitting name. It was just dark, scale perfect. It performed for the picture, sticking its dorsal up. And I was just blown away. Oh, what an absolute stunning. I was going to talk to you about uh, a couple of edges I use in, uh, in my fishing. Now, my fishing is very, very simple, but there is a couple of things that I like to do that I do believe really work. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is quite possibly one of the smallest things uh, that I do, and it did actually come about by accident years back. All I do is cut the shrink tube on my kicker at a 45 degree angle, just kind of like that. As you can see just there, how it bends so it is just above the point of the hook. This leaves a nice wide gate. I like a nice straight point, even for bottom baits. And as the hook flips, it catches 99 times out of 100 with this. Now, people say the palm test works, it doesn't work. I think it depends on the rig you're testing it with. With this rig, but even that, even when it's right on the edge, it still looks and that straight point takes it in. Straight away. And again. I'm actually trying to pull it over, but no. It's jumping, it's catching. I've caught so many fish with that simple little edge, I've lost count. Another thing I like to do in my fishing, I like to mix things up a bit. For example here, I have big fish mix hook baits. Big Fish Mix Freebies, Trigger Booster. I think the Trigger Booster is great stuff. It's a perfect addition. Any boilie, any particle, any pellet mix. Certainly caught me a load. 